Ranking England's 33-man squad ahead of June the 7th, where the squad will be reduced to 26 men. Who in this current crop of players are key to England's success and who could potentially be staying at home? Let's have a look. So here we are, as you can see. So we have all 33 players at the bottom here um, all the way through to different you know from the four goalkeepers that have been chosen to the forward line so we're going to get straight into this now some I may change around some I may not but let's start let's start with probably staying at home because I think there's going to be some in here that I can safely say won't be in the 26 man squad the first one of those is Adam Wharton. Now, as good as he's been, having seen how well Mainu was again today in the FA Cup final, I just think Adam Wharton, it's great that he's been called up. He's thoroughly deserved it as well. He's been playing really good for Palace. It's just a tournament too soon for, it, uh, for him. Definitely one for the future. But I think in this one, he's there just for Southgate to have a look at, really. And I think safely, he's going to probably stay at home. I think we can safely say that. The defenders, so the there's quite a few defenders in this squad here. Kwanzaa is probably staying at home as well. As much as he's played really, really well this season in a strong Liverpool side, I just don't see Gareth Southgate picking him. I really don't. There'll be another centre-back though who I think will be picked, who, who isn't experienced for England. But I think given England's lack of depth in that area, we'll probably go instead. But we'll come on to him in a second. Who else do we have though? Um, Konza, I don't think he's going to go neither. I think he's probably staying at home currently there to make up the numbers. All these others, though, and I know there's four goalkeepers, and we'll, again, we'll come on to those. I think everyone else is pretty much in with a shout here. So let's go. Let's go to the top now. So who are the key players? And what I mean by this is we're, we're not winning it without them. We, we cannot win this tournament without them. So this isn't about England's best players almost or better players it's literally who is important for this England team and the way England play and the reason why I'm putting it across in that way now is because the person I'm going to put straight in there is Jordan Pickford we do not win Euro 2024 without Jordan Pickford in goal it's as simple as that he is arguably England's most important player. I'll come on to a couple of us in a second. But he's a clear, obvious one who goes right into the top here. He's had a great season with Everton. We know what he does for England. He very rarely lets England down. And he's just he's just the man. He is just the man. And for England, it's vital, absolutely vital. He not only goes, but plays every single minute. Another player, it's obvious. Let's get him out of the way. Harry Kane. There's no way that, that even though England do have striking options ahead of them, the way Kane plays, the way he brings everybody else into the match, the way England rely on Kane for the way we play our football. Again, that target man, the ability for Kane to bring other people into the into the game is just completely vital to the way we play and without Harry Kane we do not win the Euros regardless of his goals forget his goals there's goals in this team without Harry Kane we would miss Harry Kane for more than goals and that is my point and that is why he is completely indispensable we do not win this tournament without him playing it's as simple as that now there's another player who I want to bring in and that's John Stones and he's not again he is one of England's better better players but I wouldn't put him in the top two or three but he's up there because of our lack of depth at centre back and we know Maguire's strengths but we also know his weaknesses without John Stones there centre back just looks in, in, insanely weak um, his pace as well I mean he's not quick but he's quicker than most of our he's quicker than Maguire it's as simple as that and I think it's just that without John Stones we've got no sort of quality at the back really and I mean top quality at centre back it's tried and trusted and without him we don't win the Euros I'm going to come on to these top players I, I, I'm going to keep that at those three who comes into let's which which well, let's let's go through the list here so we've got Anthony Gordon I'm going to leave the goalkeepers on purpose at the moment I like Anthony Gordon I want to take him but he is one of those players that comes under the category of we can only take 26 so somebody has to miss out I think he goes in here he could miss out but if he does come in he's going to be a squad player it's a 
simple as that. He's not going to be, he's not a cert to go. He's not a key player. Um, and he's certainly not indispensable to England. But if he comes in, he's going to be in the squad. He may not even get any minutes, but at the same time, he could also miss out just because he plays in the area of the pitch where so many players uh, are fighting for a place. He goes in there for me. Who do we have here? Cole Palmer, I think he he, is certain to go. He's certain to go. I'm not putting him in as a key player, not because of how he's been this year for Chelsea, otherwise he goes straight in here. I'm talking about for England. He is untested, really, in an England shirt. He's not been at a tournament before. So from an England perspective, he's not quite at that key player perspective yet. Yet, this could be the tournament for him. But there's no way I don't think he could miss out. I think he's been that good this season. He's impossible to leave out. So Cole Palmer comes in as, as as a player certain to go. Bukayo Saka, now he comes in on this list as a key player. I think the reason why, and this isn't about Saka not being as good as any of these players up here, because obviously that's nonsense. This is about how important these players are to England. And I think Saka has been one of England's most important players because outside of Kane, he's been the one scoring our goals. But I do think there's replacements in there for Saka if he wasn't fit or if he wasn't in form. And that's only because of the position he plays in. What I mean is, if Saka doesn't go to the tournament, it does impact England's chances, but I don't think it makes them detrimental to whether we can win it or not. I think other players can come in. And that is why, for me, Saka comes in as a key player and not right at the very top here. Uh, Conor Gallagher, sorry. Um, I'm struggling with him here. I think he's certain to go, given Henderson and Dyer and Phillips and all these usual players haven't been picked. In Southgate's squad, he's certain to go. He's had he's had a good season. He's No doubt he's had a good season with Chelsea. Not so good with England when he's come in. He's actually been quite poor, but... Let's hope he's, you know, he puts that to bed. But he, he's going to be certain to go, isn't he? Most definitely. Curtis Jones. Now, I think he's probably staying at home. I think he's probably staying at home because, again, there's other players playing in that position. I don't see him getting in the squad. He's had a good season, but he's just not going to He's not gonna push other people out. So I think he's staying at home. And that this is actually four out of the seven we need to get in this bottom area, or we may get less. But I think these four players in particular are pretty much certain for Southgate to stay home. There's only three players really that need to be dropped. But if you look in who's left, it's going to be very difficult. But we'll come on to that. Again, I'm leaving the goalkeeper. So Declan Rice is probably up here, isn't he? He's probably up here in terms of so important. And this is about England's spine. These players here that I've got at the top are England's spine. You've got the defence in terms of Ramsdale and Stones, Declan Rice and Harry Kane. That is the spine of this England team. And without any one of any one of these players, you know, injured or not there, England don't win the Euros for me. It's as simple as that. And that's why Declan Rice goes right in at the top, particularly given the squad he's picked and the lack of now experience we have in that central midfield area. So Declan Rice straight in at the top. Harry Maguire, he's certain to go and probably a key player for England. Not indispensable. I think those days are gone, but I think he's key. He plays well for England. He's aerially really strong and England are lacking experience in that area. So outside of him, he's going to be a key player for England. If he's injured, do I think England can't win the tournament? No, not as much as John Stones, but Harry Maguire is definitely going to be a key player for England this summer. Eze, now I think he's one of those. He's, good, he's a bit like an Anthony Gordon. Good player. I think any other any other year in an England shirt, he goes, he's certain to go because of his form. I think he comes in as a squad player if he goes, but could be one of those players that potentially misses out. It'll be a shame, a real shame, same way with both of these players. I wouldn't like to see either of them stay at home, but again, somebody has to miss out. And I think Eze could potentially be that player. Ivan Tony, again, I mean, it's pretty clear. And in fact, I'll put I'll put two players in here. In fact, no, I won't. I'll put Ivan Tony in there as a squad player. Could potentially miss out just because of his form. Even though for me, for me personally, he goes. He's England's best striker after Harry Kane in regards to how we play. Ollie Watkins has, of course, has a much better season than him um, and thoroughly deserves to go and will be going. I think he's certain to go given his form. You just can't ignore that. But I think Ivan Tony suits the way England play. But if he goes, 
he'll be going as a squad player. I just think Ollie Watkins moves into that area where he will still be a squad player, but I just think he's going to be certain to go. Jack Grealish, I think he's, I think he's certain to go. Is he certain? <sighs> I don't, I'm going to put him as a squad player. I don't. He won't miss out, but he is going to be a squad player. And I think he's more of a squad player. I don't think he's as nailed on as what he has been in the past because of injuries and things like that. So I'm not going to move him up into here. I'm going to keep him in here. I don't think there's a likelihood that he will miss out. But if he comes in, he'll not be starting games. I think Saka and Foden will be starting in those areas. So Jack Grealish comes in very much as a squad player this time. This brings me nicely onto James Madison because I wouldn't take him. I genuinely would not take James Madison but I think he also comes in as squad player if he does he's certainly not certain to go a lot of people have actually been casting doubt on whether he should go given his form in the second half of the season in particular hasn't been great so he's he's running the risk of being left behind but I'm going to keep him in as a squad player it's a tough one I think he's going to be one of those that really could be at risk of missing out Jared Branthwaite now I'm this is almost Mar me saying this sorry this is almost my own personal preference here I think he's certain to go I do think he's certain to go I think his quality that he's shown this season his stature the guy's an absolute unit so he's a great like for like replacement really for Harry Maguire should anything happen to him I just think he's certain to go I think it's his time to be picked I could be absolutely wrong here but I can't see I mean, maybe there is one other player who Southgate may prefer, but we'll have a look at that in a second. But for me, he, he has to go. He's got to pick an inexperienced centre-back. There will be another one I think I'm going to pick in there. In fact, I'll put him in now. I think that's Mark Gahey. I think he's certain to go as well. And I just think these two are the backups for Stones and Maguire. With that said in mind as well, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but I think Lewis Dunk probably stays at home, uh, mainly because of his performances with England in the last international break. I think like... Um, ben Chilwell played himself almost out of this squad and I'm surprised he's been included here I think he's there because he's a bit of an older head um, and we are weak at the back but I think I think Southgate's just got to be brave now and pick the informed centre-backs um, and Dunk has to stay at home for me Bowen is a very interesting player because if he goes he is going to be a squad player but he could miss out he could be one of those he's in the same category as Eze, Gordon, these sorts of players. I mean, all these attacking players here. He, he's just he's just playing in an area of the pitch again where there's so much talent and he could potentially miss out. I don't want him to, but there's a few players here I don't want to miss out. But I think if you move Grealish up, he probably is more certain to go. In fact, I'm going to move Jack Grealish up I've, as we've gone on. I just feel like he is going to go. And I think these players are much more, you know, m their position in the squad is much more in balance than Jack Grealish. I think he is pretty much stuck uh, stuck on. But Jared Bowen would be a shame if he doesn't go. But he's just, again, that area of the pitch, very strong area. Joe Gomez, I think he's certain to go. Um, he is going to, uh, that left back position in particular is, a real problem um, and I think that makes him a shoe in now given the fact that Chilwell wasn't picked in that squad Shaw is injured really and I'm going to drag Luke Shaw up now and say he probably stays at home and I think this will be the biggest call for Southgate and the reason why I'm putting Shaw in here is because Southgate has pretty much said as much that he doubts Luke Shaw will be fit for this tournament I think Luke Shaw stays only because of fitness if he isn't, he comes straight in. But as you can see, this gives us six players out of the seven that Southgate needs to drop. So potentially all of these guys here that I've got in the second row could all still be going if he drops these guys uh, below. And there is one other space available, but... We are currently still with four goal, uh, three goalkeepers. Sorry, uh, well, four if we include Jordan Pickford, who's already at the top here. So one of these keepers is probably going to go. So let's let's tackle those keepers now. I would. And this is only personal preference now because I think it's all pretty much, um, you know, it's, it's very difficult. You'll ask different people. They'll probably have a different three outside of Jordan Pickford. I think Ramsdale should probably stay at home. And I think Henderson and Trafford, because he's young, he's not, these players aren't going to play anyway. Give him that tournament experience. I think these guys go in, go in the squad. Obviously, they're not certain to go, but go in the squad. Potentially, any one of these could miss out, swap like for like or whatever, you know, swap Trafford for Ramsdale or Henderson for Ramsdale. But I think that would be my three goalkeepers. Jude Bellingham, it's took a while to get around to him, hasn't it? But he's, yeah, he's straight in. Is not, and, and this is where it's quite interesting. I don't class Jude Bellingham as a player that if we lose, we can't win without him. And that is because of this man here 
And that is why he goes in at the same category as well, because I think these two players replace each other and out wide you've got other players such as Palmer, Gordon, as a you know, so these players aren't, even though the quality below them isn't as good, I don't think England suffer as much if these guys are injured compared to these guys at the top. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I don't think we replace these guys, but I think these guys here are much more replaceable, even though not like for like. Um, and again, I may get some criticism for that, but they are certainly a key player for England if England are going to win this tournament. Kobe Mainu, 100% certain to go. He's just had such a good uh, season at Man United, really, considering he's playing in a poor Man United team. And he's had, obviously, a good final as well played really well today and he's going he's going he played really well in those friendlies against uh, Belgium in particular he's got to go hasn't he he's got to go Kieran Trippier I think he's going in as a squad player could miss out he could be England's starting left back I think it's injuries in there and his overall form that's probably I mean he, he played well for Newcastle when he's been fit but he has struggled for injury but he's he, he's going he is going but I'm just going to put him in here and then Carl Walker certain to go I think he is very certain to go and Trent Alexander-Arnold is certain to go as well so that gives us our 26 man team rated in these categories let me know what you think do you agree with that do you think I've got some of these players missing Mixed up. I think that's a pretty good judge of where they sit within England in terms of how they represent their country. This isn't based on club form. If it was, Bellingham and Foden would go straight up to the top here. This is based on their importance to the England national team. I have to emphasise that. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button if you're new here. I'll be covering all Euro 2024 leading up to it and across the tournament where I will be doing live streams after each game. So join me for that. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all on my next video.